Hi everyone, it's Vacha here from RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again. Today I am playing around and looking after an M-Audio Project Mix I.O. Uh, surface Control as well as Audio Interface uh, Mixer. You might have seen a video previously of me unpacking it and getting it setting up for a friend of mine who wants to set up his own uh, home studio. So... As I was getting it all set up and trying to make it work, you know, uh, there was always hurdles and things that uh, I had to jump over. And one of the things is uh, because it's an old system and it's a discontinued system, uh, it's a bit hard to get information as well as setting up and drivers and things like that. So I thought as I'm progressing it, and I'm having uh, such a good luck in getting it going, I thought I'd share that information with everybody. I did do a Google search around to find some information. Uh, there were a few videos, some in uh, language other than English, so it was a bit hard to actually understand and follow the instructions. And also, uh, you know, there's not much more information out there. And I wanted to get this set up and go and make it work as a surface control with Studio One version 3. Although it uh, quite happily supports Cubase, Logic X, as well as Pro Tools, and I think um, a few others, but uh, not for Studio One. So uh, my aim was to get it to work with Studio One, and um, I actually managed to do it quite, uh, quite easily, and most of the functions and options buttons and the rotary knobs and the faders work very well with Studio One version 3. But before I actually get into Studio One setting it up, I thought I'll do some English demonstration and explanation of what the Project Mix I.O. audio interface control panel does and how it actually works. One of the things that uh, if you have this uh, unit, one of the things you need to understand that it's not a standard mixer. So you cannot use it as live performances. It needs to be connected through Firewire into a PC. And the audio interface is separate to the faders which are motorized and they, they call it you know flying faders. And moving up the faders up and down on the on the mixer does not actually affect the sound that actually goes out as as well as uh, to be recorded. Now it has eight channel input and four output as well as uh, ADAT in and out and SPDF in and out. So it's got lots of input and output. And when you go to M Audio's website and go to legacy section and download the drivers uh, for your operating system, in this case I have Windows 7 running on my old laptop. And once it's all installed and you follow that through, um, you get the control panel running as you can see on the screen. It has a few tabs along the top. It has a mixer, an output, um, the hardware communication settings, and an about tab. And also on the right hand side, it, uh, one of the con main controllers, which is called the lever, you can actually set it what that rotary knob will do for you. So very quickly, let's have a look at the mixer end. The mixer end, it has input, analog inputs 1 and 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8, and the SPDIF in. It does have uh, four returns, software returns from your DAW, so 1 and 2 as being the main, 3 and 4 is another uh, sub-channel output, as well as the SPDIF return as well. And you can link them together, 1 and 2, 3 and 4, at the moment I don't have that link so I'm using input 1 on the mixer to my microphone and that's what you are hearing. And you can set that to go hardware routed to out 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. So at the moment if I have 1 and 2 going, so when I look at output 1, so you can see output 1 and 2 going up, up and down. And if I enable 3 and 4 as well, that means it will go out 3 and 4. And these outputs are actually physical connections at the back of the unit 
There's 6.5 balanced output, uh, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, and so on. So that's how you control physically the output. And um, yeah, you can adjust the volume here, and this will adjust, as you can hear, volume hardware routed getting in and out of the physical output. Because at the same time, that output is also gone to headphones, 1 and 2, 3 and 4, or the auxiliary. So we have two headphones, um, and that's the auxiliary bus as well, which um, I haven't discovered that yet. Uh, maybe another video. So you can select the headphones to be the outputs 1 and 2, or 3 and 4, or um, the auxil auxiliary bus. I just lost my headphones. And obviously, having two headphones, so you can have two different mixes, um, or even three different mixes, so um, you can select them separately, and you can adjust the volume here. Now, these volumes here for the headphone, I can actually turn the rotary knobs up and down, and that, as you can see, my mouse is over here, I'm using my fingers to move the rotary knobs and adjust the volumes of uh, the headphones as well as you can adjust them from here. But, one thing I should mention, the volume that's coming and being recorded into your DAW is nothing to do with the faders. I'm moving, well, you probably can't see, but if I move the big 100 millimeter faders up and down, the volume doesn't change, because there are the surface control side. Those faders are uh, control and be controlled by your DAW's track faders going up and down. So as long as you understand that the two separate things, um, it will make much sense to you as well. And we can, if we need to adjust the volume from here, we can adjust it this way, and only through and only through the uh, control panel we can actually adjust the incoming volume. We can also obviously adjust the panning of it um, and so on. We can solo it out, we can mute it. So if we are doing live performance and we are going to record it, so we have you know, up to 16 microphones we can connect using the ADAT input for another eight channel coming in, like the uh, Behringer's ADA 8000. That will give us up to 16 microphones to be plugged in and recorded simultaneously in, in our DAW, so we are able to control the volumes of, of um, the live performance using the control panel of Project Mix IO, but not the faders on, uh, because they are surface controlled, as I mentioned. This is where it all controlled. This is hardware routing um, of, uh, of the system. So if we are recording a live performance, basically we can use the microphone inputs Record them all uh, as you know as many tracks as we need simultaneously with the band, and once the performance has finished, then we can use faders to actually adjust volumes as we're doing the mix. So the flying faders or motorized faders uh, can only be used when we are doing the mixing and adjusting the faders of our DAW. So this is the inputs of the control panel. This is the output of the control panel. Having a quick look at the hardware, we can have a different sample rates and uh, also ESIO uh, buffer size. And at the moment, I have 64 samples, and that's what's being recorded and what's, that's what you are hearing. Obviously, I have a microphone connected to channel 1 of the Project Mix I.O., and it's being recorded. And, you know, even with my old laptop, uh, you know, I don't actually hear any latency um, at 64 being the lowest samples for the buffer size. Um, so it's uh, quite reasonably working very well. And you can adjust, obviously, those settings depending on situation. Uh, obviously, the, if you've got 16 tracks being recorded, you might increase that to 128 and so on, just to give you enough buffering so you don't get pops and clicks. Um, and whenever you're doing a mixing, you can increase that to its maximum, so it'll be less drain on the CPU because you've got buffering, and you can use the CPU power for your uh, DAWs, plugins, and so on. 
Well, I hope this uh, brief preview of an explanation of the Project Mix I.O. by M-Audio Firewire Control Panel was helpful enough. If you have any questions, while I have the mixer, um, the, well, the actual gear here with me, um, I'll try to answer as much as I can. Um, and later on, if uh, once the mixer ends up where it needs to be in my friend's um, home studio, I'll still be able to ac have access to it and answer any questions that you might have that I physically have to access the, um, the gear. Okay, the project has been successful. I was able to download and install the drivers, as uh, you would have seen. And I've also installed Studio One version 3 Prime, the free one on the, on the laptop, just to test it out. And I set it up with as a control surface, and I had to use the uh, McKee control surface because it uses the HUI interface, and that actually makes it work. I've added about 16 tracks onto there and now 16 tracks are actually controlled by the uh, M-Audio Project Mix I.O. You know, quite simply, I can actually adjust um, sort of the levels there. You can see it adjust. So if I come in here and adjust, um, not sure if you can see it in the camera, but as I move with my mouse, the, um, the faders, the faders over there move and as I move the faders down here the faders over there in Studio One also move up and down same thing with goes with the uh, the panning um, track selection um, mute and record as well as solo it works you can also have audio enable as well so you can track it back at the moment it is uh, the buffer setting I put in as 64 samples and uh, monitoring straight from uh, from the laptop so it's not um, I don't even have direct monitoring turned on so the audio from the microphone is coming into the um, M audio project mix and then being sent through the firewire into studio one I have studio one channel enabled with uh, track monitoring and then I also have effect added and then when I have my headphones on which is plugged into the M Audio project mix I can hear my vocals nice and clear and also with the effects so latency is very very uh, short um, uh, you can't even notice it it's mm, pretty much mm, non-existent you know as far as um, the thing is concerned, especially when it's running on, a, on an old laptop as well, on Windows 7. So this is quite impressive. So the project is heading out really nicely. I think someone will be very, very happy with the results. Yes. Um, till next time, I'll show you in the next video all of the settings that I have done, how I've actually have the project mix connected and set up. So if anybody else interested in getting um, the Project Mix with Studio One version 3, I will show that in the next video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you'll be kept up to date with anything that I do in my home studio. And also don't forget to visit my website recordingstudio9.com. There's a lot more information there and blog entries which are not on YouTube. So I hope I'll see you there as well. Until next time, as always, thanks for watching.